Sometimes, hanging by a thread is exactly what you need. But other times, it can prove to be your downfall. A simple zip line from one point to another may quickly reveal itself to be more than just a simple means of transportation. From dangling above a hungry horde of baddies, to catching what would be a fatal fall, to the hardy dwarf who prefers to live on the edge, the zip line is the tool worth exploring. Hey there, fellas. Before we begin, if you're a fan of these discussions surrounding Deep Rock Galactic or just generally enjoy Deep Rock Galactic content, well, you've come to the right place. I've been making an effort to get more Deep Rock Galactic content out there while hopefully maintaining the quality, so if you like what you see, be sure to see for that like button, subscribe, and maybe even leave a comment. It helps the channel a lot, but I mostly just love reading all the comments you guys post regardless. It's always a treat. So, without further ado, let's kick all the barrels into the drop pod and dive right in. A dwarf and his mobility item are inseparable. Without a unique means of solving environmental puzzles, a particular class loses a chunk of its identity. The driller, with his drills, flips the bird to the terrain and makes it conform to his will, giving him a bombastic attitude while suiting his role of heavy-duty excavation. The scout zips carelessly through the air, navigating around the most treacherous of environments with ease, a trait you might expect from a character named Scout. The engineer selects strategic locations in the environment to place his platforms, securing locations to befit a defense site, especially with the assistance of his turrets. But what about the gunner? The gunner's role in the team is less defined by his capacity to maneuver. Unlike the driller and scout, the name gunner immediately brings into mind the capacity for sustained conflict, clearly a hint to his intended role. The gunner is the dwarf you want to be with once a swarm is announced. He's the dwarf you want to be if a swarm is announced and you are alone. The gunner's entire loadout is centered around this combat-focused role. His primary weapons are built for heavy damage output and sustained fire. While the rest of the squad empties their mags and are in the middle of reloading, the gunner continues dishing out damage for an extended period of time. His grenades are also all focused on dishing out heavy damage with less of a necessity to focus too much on strategy. See a crowd of bugs fitting for a cluster? Well, just pull the pin and watch the fireworks. If things get too spicy during a swarm, the gunner can drop a bubble shield protecting him and his team and preventing the necessity to kite and relocate. With all of the gunner's utilities geared towards this combative role, what can we say about the gunner's mobility tool, the zipline launcher? The zipline gun is lacking in the ammo department. Topping off at only four or five lines, the frequency at which the gunner can deploy this equipment is, well, infrequent. Those lines that are deployed, though, remain deployed forever. If you fire even a single line, you could very well be expending 25% of your zipline ammo capacity. But that may be worth it if you've chosen your positioning carefully. Positioning the zipline is no easy task. Tighter caves make zipline deployment completely unproductive. The upgraded connection joint on Tier 1 can make a pretty large difference in your capability to deploy with more versatility. Not to mention, steeper angles mean more downwards momentum when releasing the brakes. Traveling from point A to point B on a zipline can be extremely slow depending on the angle, putting time efficiency into question. Depending on the height, you may very well be vulnerable to inordinate fall damage. Deploying the zipline requires a large amount of ammo consumption. Positioning it can be difficult. Even the act of traveling on the zipline is mostly unpreferable and better suited for niche situations. Needless to say, the zipline lacks the traits the other classes relish from their support tools. It contrasts in versatility, ammo economy, and overall risk. While certainly maintaining a necessary role in cave navigation, the zipline feels like its design is less focused on mobility and more oriented towards the very role the gunner plays in the squad. Sustained fire, resilience, 
and the ability to maintain a position are the gunner's top three virtues. With a big gun, a shield, and even a zipline, the gunner both applies pressure to the bogs and resists it himself. If the gunner utilizes these tools effectively, you won't see him pushed out from any defense point. The zipline's function as a combat assistant utility is congruent with the role of a gunner. Zipline perching is a utilization of the zipline for combat purposes. By suspending himself on the zipline, the gunner is out of reach from melee based attacks, but is far more vulnerable to projectiles due to his decreased mobility. This trade off is definitely something to be considered if you notice that your cave is especially prone to acid spitters or you've dropped into a Mactera Plague mission. Being out of reach from melee bugs allows the gunner to focus less on his personal safety and more on raining down sustained fire. Less time allocated to dodging and weaving away from the bugs means more time afforded to target prioritization. Wardens, Praetorians, Oppressors, and any other high priority target is easy pickings to a perched gunner. The line of sight that comes naturally from the top down perspective is another substantial bonus, minimizing potential obstructions that would be a problem from the ground level perspective. This geometry is perfectly fitting for a crowd control auto cannon build. In fact, a crowd control AoE setup would be more effective against crowds if you are firing from a top down perspective. You're making the most of the AoE radius of that autocannon. You wouldn't get the same damage output if you were firing into the first enemy of a crowd from ground level. This wouldn't necessarily be true for a crowd control minigun build though. Blow through rounds wouldn't be utilized as much if you were firing down from above, though it wouldn't be useless by any means. Single target damage builds excel from this perspective as well if your target prioritization skills are finely tuned. But what about the downsides of zipline perching? Some of them are obvious. You are more vulnerable to projectiles, and fall damage is an ever looming concern. Dropping shields for support may not be possible if you've dedicated yourself to a particular position while your team has migrated away. But zipline perching is one of those strategies that generates a lot of conversation, not unlike the bunker strategy. There are those that don't like it, and others that do. So how could you zipline perch while trying your best to keep everybody happy? Well, first we have to figure out some common critiques. Two interesting dissenting opinions are equally common and seemingly paradoxical. Some would say the strategy is so easy so as to be cheesy and others would say it's so dangerous or unproductive so as to be reckless. But if you ask me, the popularity of these either or contrasting observations is more indicative of a balance between success and failure amongst the users across the population. In order to break down this false dichotomy, we need to figure out just what encourages some employees to adopt one point of view over the other. To start, some believe that zipline perching can be selfish or inconsiderate. The melee bugs that can't aggro on the floating gunner will aggro on the nearest possible target instead. The idea is that essentially the rest of your team is drawing far more aggro than usual, and this certainly is true. In order to avoid this being a bad thing, you essentially need to justify being perched up. Dropping a shield to your ground dwelling teammates can assure them that even though you are suspended above them, you still care about their safety. Also, taking out not only a large amount of bugs, but the higher priority bugs through the utilization of the zipline will most certainly help justify its usage, especially if you are paying attention to your team and dropping shields when necessary. I believe the main claim of gunners being selfish using this strategy stems from inexperienced gunners utilizing this strategy and maybe not pulling their weight, as this strategy is undoubtedly popular amongst newer players who may not yet be able to fully utilize the strategy at the time. The truth is, an experienced gunner will look out for their team while they're being perched up, and it's entirely possible to utilize a build or practice that benefits from the increased line of sight and top-down angle. Not unlike other builds and strategies, there is a skill curve, and considering your team is an important part of that skill curve. Considering the position of the line itself, it's ideal to place it somewhere where your team will be lingering. Amaran battles, for instance, are prime real estate for ziplines, and you can position a zipline in such a way 
where you have an unparalleled overview of the arena. Usually, dwarves position themselves on top of the shell or on top of Doretta to get that environmental awareness. But with the height of the zipline, you get an even larger line of sight. The main danger is being knocked off the zipline, especially from that burst from the stone that is sure to knock you down. Sliding down the zipline before it explodes is a good practice that rewards those who pay attention. Positioning the zipline above the drill dozer, parallel with the direction it faces, can allow you to maneuver yourself to get a good angle on oppressors pursuing the dozer, without having to compromise your position. Before you focus fire on the oppressor, marking another high priority target that you can't afford to shoot at the moment is both hugely useful to yourself for target tracking and your team, who may even take care of it before you have a chance to attack it. This practice is mostly useful if you have the ability to apply heavy single target damage at medium to long range, so sidearms built for damage and range or most minigun setups are ideal. In this attempt to amplify your line of sight, you might be compelled to position your zipline higher than usual, and doing so can turn out to be a huge mistake if you don't take proper precautions. Adding additional zip lines parallel to the one you'll be riding opens up a much wider array of possibilities. Having zip lines deployed below you can be a sort of insurance from potential fall damage, and having zip lines deployed beside you can act as sort of monkey bars, allowing you to jump between them and increasing your mobility on those lines hugely. This works wonderfully on illumination missions, where if the dreadnought shoots a projectile at you, you are fully capable of dropping down to the lower zip line or dodging horizontally. Positioning your lines in the shape of a zigzag can allow you to ascend to greater heights even after you do need to drop down. With these practices, building your zip line for ammo is highly valuable, considering you may be firing at least one extra zip line below your perch. Even besides zip line perching, this act of proactively placing zip lines in strategic locations to nullify all fall damage is a wonderful idea in general. Placing zip lines below long drops or in places where dwarves are at high risk of falling can save lives. Sometimes, your zip line doesn't have to go anywhere in particular, but rather just be there to give a fallen dwarf potentially one last hope for survival. Placing zip lines in locations where mobility can be enhanced, say in the middle of combat, is also a really good practice, and dwarves who take this extra step might very well be glad they did so. Shooting a zip line positioned overlooking a ledge that bugs are crawling out from behind gives an extremely good angle and allows one to deal damage before bugs have even been able to be seen by the team, because from the ground, the ledge obscures line of sight. Perching in this way is of immense utility. The zipline is an extremely powerful utility in the right hands. If you aren't fooled by its initial simplicity, you'll discover that hiding beneath the surface is a sea of potential. Well, with that, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through. If you enjoy this content, I have other videos similar to it, discussing strategies for the other classes. Immediately after this video goes up, I'm first uh, gonna play some Cyberpunk, which is an insanely amazing game, I love it, and then I'm gonna get to work on the next build point. Thanks again and good luck in those caves.